One group of very young children being classified on the autism spectrum at what some say is an alarming rate. High incidence rate of autism in its Smalley children as well. Doctors there are wondering if for Smalley people, a lack of sunlight in the winter, the widespread use of sunscreen, and efforts to avoid sun exposure are resulting in too little vitamin D being absorbed through their dark skin. Vitamin D angle, you know, so at the same time that autism incidence is going up, vitamin D deficiency has been going up, or, or you can look at it the other way, vitamin D sufficiency has been going down. Because this is the biggest problem black folks deal with um, that don't live on the equator. Black folks in America specifically, vitamin D deficiency. Well, vitamin D, when there's enough around in the body, it binds to something called a vitamin D receptor and it fits just right. And, it's, and, and when they're bound together, it can unlock a lot of things in the body. If a mother is deficient in vitamin D, this may have severe consequences in the developing fetal brain of her child because maybe that gene that needs vitamin D to get activated is not getting activated. And as a consequence, there's not enough serotonin being made in that infant's brain. And so it possibly could affect the way that brain develops. We have three children. All three have been diagnosed on the spectrum in some form or the other how vitamin D may be playing a role in autism, I like to kind of explain just briefly what vitamin D is. Sure, sure. Um, it's kind of important to understanding how it may play a role in brain function or brain dysfunction. And despite the name, vitamin D is actually, it, it actually gets converted into a steroid hormone. Mm -hmm. So, you know, estrogen is a steroid hormone, testosterone is a steroid hormone. Um, and vitamin D gets converted into a steroid hormone. We have seen a tremendous number of children that are Somali, but born here in the United States or in Minneapolis who have autism. Most troubling is that all of the Somali children the Minneapolis schools have identified with autism were born here, like Shamake. The district doesn't have a single child born in Somalia who immigrated here receiving special ed services for the disorder. I believe is vaccination. In the rural of Somalia, there's no immunizations. Huda says parents worry not only about the vaccinations their kids receive, but about the immunizations they themselves received before entering the United States. Brain development. So having an autoimmune response is not a good thing for anyone, and it's particularly not a good thing for a pregnant mother. Maybe the low vitamin D you know, leads to the low serotonin in the developing brain, and this may be part of the reason why um, you know, there's an increase in autism. It may be part of the way that low vitamin D leads to autism. There is a biochemical difference between black women's breast milk and white women's breast milk, because white women's breast milk has the least amount of vitamins and minerals in it of any breast milk. The normal medical lab values, the normal daily allowance is set by for Europeans by Europeans. The breast milk is set on the white woman's breast milk, which has a different fat and protein ratio. What I'm saying is, if you put a black child on a white woman's breast, it reduces the child's sucking time on the nipple and reduces the child's response if you take the breast out of their mouth. It reduces the ability of the child to bond to itself, to bond to its mother, to bond to its culture. Just by switching the fat and protein ratio in the breast milk, which you call Sililac or Similac, which is based on a white woman's breast milk, not a black woman's breast milk, a white woman's breast milk. So you give that to your child and it reduces the child's ability to bond to its mother and to bond to itself. Diet, latitude, skin exposure, skin pigmentation are all the same as ancestral. Now, their blood con uh, 25 hydroxy D concentrations have been measured. And here for the Mazai and for the Hadza, we have values of 110 to about 100 and some odd uh, nanomoles per liter. And if I average the two of those, because they're not statistically significantly different, that's the ancestral value. Now there, by comparison, is the Institute of Medicine value, and there is the Endocrine Society value. So you can see graphically. The that is completely opposite. It's actually consistent with activation. So vitamin D would then recognize the one in the brain and go, oh, turn on, make more serotonin in the brain. And serotonin in the brain plays a very important role in the way you feel, it plays an important role in 
impulse control, um, in long-term planning, long-term behavior, in anxiety, uh, you know, memory. So it plays an important role in a lot of different cognitive functions and behaviors. That's why you got drive-bys. It's a biochemical thing. Oh yeah, it's the Magical Child by Joseph Pierce. Then they study to show you another book, Infancy in Uganda by Mary Ainsworth. And these are books about them studying black children whose mother was on natural food and breastfed and father was on natural food and breastfed. And they studied these children. And the child born with these parents could sit up at birth, look his mother and father in his eye, know its name, know his mother and father's name at birth. Document it. The Magical Child by Joseph Pierce. They didn't believe it. They went back 10 years again, again and studied the same thing. Same thing happened. They didn't believe it. Mary Ainsworth went back and studied it. My empathy in Uganda. Same thing. You're raising your children like retards and wondering what's happening. But in breaking the stigma, it's okay for them to have this because it gets, it gets them the help that they need. Randall says she was able to get that help for her younger son and daughter much earlier than her oldest son. And she hopes to help other families do the same. Now, if you're taking a multivitamin tablet a day, it's about 400 international units. The average African American needs three to 5,000 international units per day. It is very difficult to overdose on vitamin D, by the way. I take 5,000 a day, 5,000 international units a day. Okay, so what you're getting in a multivitamin is not enough. On an island by ourselves, you know, we didn't have anyone else in our family that had autism, didn't, even, didn't know what it was, um, wasn't really talked about in the black community. And so when we were able to connect with other families, it was like, oh, I found my tribe. African American average vitamin D levels are like 15, 17, and so you have to get from there to 50. Mm. And so it's going to take a little more to make that jump and it's closer to 25 or 30 units per pound. The trend of Somali children born in Minnesota with autism has striking similarities to a finding in the Middle East. Researchers there discovered that children of Ethiopian descent born in Israel had high rates of disorders on the autism spectrum. The same was not true for children born in Ethiopia who immigrated to Israel. Ethiopians and Somalis share a genetic tie.